Zoom at the same time. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. How's that? It looks beautiful. So uh, this is in uh, down in Newport, uh, Crystal Cove. I think you went there and shot your drone. Yes. Safely, legally. <laughs> So if you go to the right side of um, this state park, there's this cave. I don't know if you've walked down on this side. I don't know that I don't, it looks familiar, but I, I think I, was that the thousand steps or not thousand steps? Or is that near that? Crystal, or? No, this is Crystal Cove. That's Crystal Cove. Yeah. And then all the way at the end is um, on that. I don't know if you can see it. It's like Emerald Bay and Laguna. Right, right oh. behind this is um, Colonel Damar. I know where you're at. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, this is like super low tide here, so you can get all the way inside the cave, and it's, it's shot with an, a wide angle, uh, fourteen by uh, fourteen to twenty-eight. Beautiful. Let's I love see. this. I love this. I mean, this totally. I'm in love with this photo. I mean, it's um, makes me feel good to look at it. <laughs> I hope you, I wonder, do you get that kind of enjoyment out of this image? Because you shot it. Are you too close to it? Or do you look at beautiful things you've made and do you get any enjoyment out of that? Um, I like exploring places, like, especially by myself, because I get to take my time. Like, instead of like, it's really fun being with someone else, but you don't have, you don't have to worry about anybody else, just yourself and just enjoying the moment. Um, I, I think my favorite part is just editing it and then just looking at how the before and after, that's where I get the most enjoyment. It's just okay. seeing like what I captured straight from the camera and then just making it more, I guess, pop out. Right. It's beautiful. This is your friend Vincent here? Yeah. Cool. Let me, let me get him his video going. <laughs> I'll get him started on the video. <laughs> hey, Vincent. Hello. Hey, Vincent. <laughs> this is photo number one. You got you got here just in time. <laughs> so I was just saying, Vincent, this is a uh, Crystal Cove State Park. It's a wow. three mile park, and um, this is just on the right side of it. This is a cave where this is like a super low tide where you can just walk in. That's nice. So I just move on to the next one or just sure whenever you want there's no whatever you want to do oh I guess that's what I want. oh there we go wow so i took this with my phantom 4 pro drone at uh, santa cruz this is shark fin cove from above wow for me it kind of looks like someone giving the middle finger <laughs> <laughs> You got your fist and then the one finger up top. God, that's beautiful though. So I think where I'm actually at is like right here. I don't know if you can see my cursor. Right there? Yeah. On that little peninsula kind it's of like a little dot. Yeah. But you can see all these like lines right on top of the cliffs, like they they were planted or something. Oh, okay. Oh yeah. What is that? Some machine do that? I'm not sure. I never saw that when I was walking on top of the cliffs, but from my area of view, I don't think you would see that while walking. Now, when did, when did, I mean, I'm sorry if you already said it, but when did you go here and like, was this a, how long did you stay type of thing? Uh, I think this was two years ago. We, it was me, my mom, and my sister. My sister was off going to check out the university up there. Cool. So, yeah. yeah. It was super windy too, so I was, I was glad uh, I was able to get this panorama. It was a panorama actually. And that's a one shot, that's not a composite? Yeah, it is. It's like, I think multiple shots in order to get all of it, because okay. it's pretty wide. Because I, I can't fly that high, so. And uh, you've been flying a drone how many years? I think almost four years now. Right. Because I, like, I felt like you were flying before we took that class together. Yeah, I was. I think it was, I was flying maybe two years. For two years. Right, because I yeah. remember you being very experienced. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was fun, that class. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. 
what's what's Josh doing? Do you, have you kept up with him? Or I don't know. I know that I, I think he was doing that somewhere else, and I think he was, you know, him. He's really good at opportunity, so he was doing some types of work with drone. But I don't know. Um, you know, Larry Hack would know. He's the one that kind of kept up with him. So um, this is a uh, Crescent Bay in Laguna, one of my favorite beaches that I love wow. to swim at and take photos of. Wow, beautiful. So this was shot with the, the Nikon D810 with a uh, 10 stop filter, just so I can get wow. the smoothness of the water and uh, some movement in the clouds. And I think that's, it's called Seal Rock out there. Okay. And is this an easy shot to get meaning with this? Well, you slowed it down. So if there's people, they probably would turn into water. But normally, would there be a lot of people on those rocks? Or is it kind of a place where you can kind of get a good shot here without much effort? Uh, again, I think you need to go like during low tide or if you're not afraid of getting wet, that you can climb up these sides of the cliff. Um, yeah, there's like a few amount of people that go here. I'd say like maybe around five. Not really many people want to go climb these rocks and cliffs. It's too gnarly. Yeah, kind of. You really have to go on the perfect time. Mm -hmm. But well, yeah, this like right down here is like a little pool, a little tide pool. Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. That last pic, okay. So that last picture, what, how, you know, what, what are we looking at here as far as how many hours of work? Including shooting it, processing it. Ah, uh, I think maybe thirty minutes of editing. Mm -hmm. Around that time, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I I was um I messed with the blues, the the colors off the rocks that I don't know what what's on those rocks to give all that feet, that off that yellow hue, and then you have around down here it's like that red like I don't know seaweed growth on here mm -hmm. I mean that's <laughs> it's beautiful yeah so beautiful wow and then this is my favorite um state park it's palos verde it's called abalone cove or abalone cove state park taken wow. with the Phantom 4 pro as well wow this was taken last year during summer i think that's when we got like a whole bunch of rain and then it just exploded Palos Verdes into all this yellow flower. Wow. I think, where am I? I think I'm right around here on this cursor. That's killer. I can kind of see. Barely, barely. It's like maybe something right there. Right. So to get a shot like this, do you have to, you know, like watch the weather or did, or you just go anyways? How do you, you know? Oh, I use, um, especially for drones, I use this app called UV, UV, uh, UAV forecast. Oh, it's, oh. it's going to be overexposed. Okay. But it, it lets me know um, if it's okay to fly. It text, tells me the temperature, the wind, gusts, visibility, and uh, how many satellites are locked. So it keeps my drone wow. without like hovering somewhere else. Really comprehensive. Yeah. And I think towards the end of this, it got really windy, so I just brought it in. So I was lucky enough to have the drone at this height without it being compromised from the wind and swaying it. Okay. But yeah, but down here, you can see the both caves right here. But now it's used to be able to walk right here to the edge, but okay. now they closed it off because it's been unstable. Okay. How often do you go to this place? I used to go like at least once a month, not anymore. <laughs> because why, why not? Is it just too hard to get to or are you afraid there'd be too many people there? Or? Oh no, there's not that many people here. Um, I just haven't gone because of quarantine so far. Yeah. And plus school's got me busy. Okay, right. But yeah, this is my absolute favorite place in Los Angeles. It's gorgeous. And have you shot this on the ground? Yeah. Obviously? Yeah. I'll show you. A in a couple of pictures, I'll show you what it looks like from inside the cave. It's the, it's that image you posted on Facebook as oh, the cover. Oh, sweet, sweet. Yeah. Okay. And then this is another view of the coastline of this. Oh my God! Look at that water. I think my favorite part of this is just all these lines up here, that the water's creating. Whoa.
It's beautiful. And I'll show you what the inside looks like. That's that shot. Yeah. That's insane. So this one was just a composite of two images. So I, I exposed for the cave and then I exposed for the the sunset. My and God. I combined the two. Now, how the heck did you get in there? It looks like the, you had to get wet to get in there. Oh, no. Um, you had to climb right around here and then just like, like grab onto the wall and mm -hmm. then just start, yeah, step on this rock right here and then you're, you're good to go. Oh. But these rocks are kind of slippery, so. I'm out. I'm out. Let's see. <laughs> this is a Brandon exclusive here. Forget it. Yeah, this, I love this cave. I love shooting caves in general. Why is that? I don't, you really don't see any caves, especially in Los Angeles. So it's just like, where is that? Is that? <laughs> totally. Uh, it's, it's otherworldly for me. But I just love it the, the it orange is. and pinks. And, and, and probably like caves like this one, people lived in there, right? I mean, like it was shelter and uh -huh. yeah. That's so rad. So this one was taken in 2014. Um, me, my friend Frank, and then two other Instagram people that I've never met. We we all got into a van and we just like headed out to Yosemite together. Seriously? Yeah, it was awesome. I've never done anything like that before. Like got in and with like random people and was like, let's just go. <laughs> so this is off the, the 395 highway. I don't know if you've ever been here, but it's like there's always an abandoned house there and and there's a full moon and then you can see the Milky Way right in the background. So, so explain to me like why I'm seeing so many stars. Like I look, it looks like daytime, but. Uh, it's just really dark over there in uh, Yosemite. Okay. Like driving eight hours. I think it was just a little bit more cause we were stopping on the way there, but cause there's no city nearby. There's not enough light pollution and you're able to see that many stars. So this is uh, obviously on a on a tripod, and how many seconds is this exposure? It's probably twenty five or thirty. Okay. Maybe twenty five, especially with the moon out, and then uh, you don't see any uh, movement in the stars. Once you go past thirty seconds, you're gonna see movement. Okay. Yeah, but I was surprised that I was even able to get color off those mountains. You can see green and oranges and browns. Now, why is that? I don't think my little D seven or whatever I have I don't think it would do that is this because of I the fidelity of your camera probably but I think the d7000 can still able to get um those colors out maybe okay. not as good but <laughs> okay because it looks like daytime that's what fooled me when I first saw this yeah it was a, it was a full moon okay that's, that's beautiful just... then this is out in your I forgot the what this peak was called but there's like a railing right around me and it was a moonrise. Okay. And it was, it was almost a surreal moment because right when you saw that moon, like start rising from the mountains, yeah. you can see like the rays of light casting over um, half dome on each side, almost like a sunset shooting through um, clouds. It's almost like that. And then right around here, I think is a Andromeda galaxy. Really? Yeah. What a trip. That's the moon. That's not the sun. Brandon, God, this just blows my mind. It's beautiful, and it blows my mind as a photographer. <laughs> I don't shoot this kind of stuff, so I love this. You ever been to Yosemite? No, never been. No. You should. <laughs> you make it like That's, a number one thing to do. Really? That's a good yeah. one. I'll do that. Um, this was taken in Paul's Verdes. Um, I went to my girlfriend's, uh, um, um, I think three mile run for sunrise. And I just, I took my 150 to 600 and shot towards, um, uh, San Pedro. And you can see the Korean, um, yeah, I was gonna say, right that's, what, that's, that's what that is, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that was just interesting to show. This is that, is this the beach you go down the big steep road to get to it and uh, which? Oh, this is PV here. Yeah, I'm shooting from PV towards okay. the future. I think I that what they're talking about is around the corner, around here. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah. The I, I didn't know which cove it was. It's so. This is so beautiful. I just otherworldly. This um, 
I love the, 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 you know, the contrast. You, I don't know if you put it on here, if it just happened this way, but this looks yeah, so... Yeah, yeah, like, just so I can get those blacks a little bit, like, almost silhouetted. Because it looks so, like, uh, beautiful. I mean, just so, so um, you know, so the epitome of Southern California. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah. And then this right here is the Vicente Lighthouse. One of my... Um, Absolutely favorite places to go and watch the sunset. And you have Catalina in the background. It was a long exposure. I I don't know if it was like a maybe a minute long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my personal favorite photos that I'd taken last year. And I've never, I don't know this. I've, of course, I know that lighthouse, but I don't know this point of view. So it's like I'm imagining Brandon, you know, <laughs> frolicking through the forest to get this. I don't know. <laughs> now there's there's a, a little walking trail right here. Okay. Have you ever been to this location? Yeah, yeah, I have. I shot you know like where that shots dark here. parking lot is right around here? Yeah. The palm trees? Yeah. So you just follow this little pathway. Okay. Down here, and then you just walk, and there's just a, fen a fencing right there. Yeah, so I just really, put my tripod on the other side. It's just gorgeous. And then this is also from Santa Cruz. Oh my God, it's so dramatic. I think this was um, two images as well. I shot um, a long exposure just for the waves and then another yeah. one for the waves washing back down towards the, the ocean. And then I just put them together. Wow. I forgot what this thing was called, this state park. I forget. I love this blue. Is that a thing? Are you did it on purpose? Like the, this tonality? Like are you some think, kind of a painter or something like that and you use that in your photography or is this one of your 15 minute jobbers. Why is this thing so gorgeous? <laughs> Once in a lifetime photos for me. One of my also personal favorites. No, Beautiful it's, photo. I think I just made it a tad, tad bit bluer and then I maybe made the rocks just a little bit more brown so they can get that different tones right there clashing mm -hmm. with each other. It's like perfect, Brandon. Thanks. Let's check another one. This was at Trona Pinnacles that me and my friend went. I think it's a, what a four hour drive from where I live in Downey. And there's, there's just this random cave with these hinges, this metal frame right here. And I just got in and I shot him while he was walking out. That's so cool. Have you been to Trina Pinnacles? No, I'm not, I'm trying to think, where's this at? I've, I've never even heard of it, I don't believe. I forget how to get there, but, <laughs> but it's like going- You go north know, or like south? Off Palm Springs in okay. that or something okay. like that. I forget. Uh -huh. But you definitely need a car that's able to handle like dirt roads. Okay, right, right. You don't want to go out there in like a real lowered uh, race car, is what you're saying. No. <laughs> this is also from uh, Toronto Pinnacles at night. And that's uh, my flashlight shooting up top. And that's, I think that's me. Or it could be my friend. So you went over there and set it down and then went and shot this type of thing? I think so. Yeah. Beautiful. Then I'll show you another one without the flashlight. On the right side, this like orange reddish glow is the military base. Oh, the lights? By. The yeah. lights from the, okay. But other than that, it's gorgeous. You can see the Milky Way without um, the camera. It's beautiful, beautiful over there. Yeah. Love that silhouette. Let's see. And then this is a sunrise shot from that same location. My God. Where is this again? Tell me this one again. Toronto Pinnacles. Toronto Pinnacles. Yeah, this this is a pretty good place to, to go. A lot of off-roaders come here just to camp out for the night or how many days. This is like unreal, Brandon. This is not one of your favorites too? No, it's not. <laughs> no? No. This this thing just astounds me. It's so gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, let's see. So this is a mono, this is near Mono Lake in Yosemite. I think maybe 45 minutes away from Yosemite. Okay. I think this is just a pathway towards the lake that you can still access at night. And we just found this tractor and we just started shooting it. And the Milky Way, I think, is out of focus. <laughs> Oh, it's soft? Yeah. 
I see like blue light on the ground near the tractor. Is that some light you brought in or? Yeah, lighting? I think, yeah, we use the flashlight just to illuminate the, whatever this vehicle is. Could have been a oh, little like bit too much. Uh, light painting style? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I also have like a little bit more right here when we were at Mono Lake. I just I think there's a light right in the background. You can see the red and white from someone else shooting it. Oh, I was going to ask what that was. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. Those, those, is that a stalagmite or stalactite? I don't, is that whatever those peaks I, are? They're, they're like, they're made out of salt. It's like this, this whole lake is just. I don't know, like almost in that way you were saying like stalagmites are just salt, salt deposits. Oh, this is that lake that's near like a uh, mammoth? Uh, near Yosemite, it's called Mono okay. Lake. Okay, okay. I'm a little bit more. God, that's ridiculous, look at that. I would love to go back there and reshoot it because I, I know how to uh, edit those Milky Way photos now. <laughs> and oh. I have a better camera now. Okay. I'm pretty sure it would have looked a lot better. And this is of the, the same, the famous um, subject here in Mono Lake. My God, it looks like like a castle or something. And then you can also see, um, I really, I forgot what it was, but on certain nights you can see like this light glow, like this green. Like I didn't uh -huh. add that. It's there in the sky. Really? You just need a long exposure to see it. And then right over here is the galaxy again. That's the, uh, that's the, what you're pointing out in the other photo? Yeah. Wow. And then this is also another mo a moon rise from the lake. <laughs> that's beautiful. Let's see. Then another shot. Wow. This is... The light source is just purely from the moon. There is no like flashlight pointing at it. It's so, um, so the so obviously it was clear this night because I mean, the, the light looks so sharp. Yeah. So, and then this was sunrise that same day or night. I think I only had 30 minutes of sleep. I couldn't sleep at all. Why? You just, but, you couldn't wait to shoot or you just, yeah, it was it was freezing. I felt yeah. the temperature drop from like fifty to thirty in like in an instant, and I woke up shivering. That's and then I, I slept for a good thirty minutes in the car. It was it was just uncomfortable, and then I just got up, and yeah. I think everyone was pissed off at me because I opened the door. <laughs> <laughs> That's rad. And then this is Mist Falls. It's one of the toughest hikes that I've ever done. It's just pure, there's like actually a staircase made out of the, the rock that you get to climb. <laughs> and that water is freezing cold. I actually jumped in after taking these photos. You did? Yeah. And I, I was able to walk right on this rock right here. Uh-huh. It was freezing cold. And, and where is this located, Mist Falls? Yeah, right in Yosemite. That's Yosemite, okay. Yeah. So this is all runoff, that's why it's so cold, or is it just cold up there? I guess a runoff, yeah. This is like, that's, uh, 2014 is I think around that time where we were hardly getting any water. So this is like a little bit of water right right now. Okay. This whole thing, like from over here to over here would be spewing with water. Okay. Right. Let's see. I forgot what this place was called too. You can see Half Dome, Capitan. Oh, yeah. Then the dried out waterfall around this location. Oh. Beautiful. Then, yeah, a little bit overdone with the editing here. But it's so gorgeous. I kind of. These pictures, this, these, and a few of the ones from Mono Lake, you know, they have a. a Kind of a mysterious thing about them somehow i don't know how to explain it but it's like a yeah they're very uh i don't know i, I really love them it's ridiculous and this is a a stacking of um a star sh i forgot how many, i think maybe over 200 um shots were taken to get all okay. of the um, star effect okay 
It ain't that's coming. happening because the earth is spinning? Yeah. I think this is I think one of my favorite photos that I took on this trip. This is the one where you woke up early and opened Oh, this the door. was like before I went to the car to sleep. Okay. Yeah, I think this was like maybe two hours. I forgot what time we got we got there, like at night, like maybe ten o'clock. And we stayed out to like two in the morning. Wow. And then another sh panoramic shot from up top this peak. What's all the glowing stuff? Campers or? Is I think there's a little town down there in Yosemite. Okay. Yeah, there's cabins and there's actually like a supermarket down there, and a whole bunch of just lights, street lights. And this is not a drone shot. This is a um, just you're on a vantage point where you're getting the shot. Yeah, just a long exposure shot. Okay. Man, it's beautiful. It's so gigantic. You really. Yeah, you need to definitely visit Yosemite. It's like bucket list number one. Okay, I'm gonna do that. Wow. It's beautiful. Uh, but yeah, that's I think my best photos for road trips. Oh, I have man. a lot more photos from everywhere else, but thank you for sharing that. Um, wow, that was heavy, dude. <laughs> so, are you? Do you have some kind of like a immunity to beauty? Because you're saying somebody's oh, it's not really that beautiful. It's like, cause what are you talking about? It's like ridiculously beautiful. It's like uh, so much energy. And it's like so big. I'm hard on myself when it comes to my photos. <laughs> <laughs> But that was from 2014, so in the span of six years, like my editing and what I look at to, to compose photos have gotten better, so I just need to go back out there and shoot those um, same locations just to say, eh, it's better, it's a little bit better. Have you, um, and has that literally been the length of time you've been working on imagery, six years, or? Uh, it's, I think it's been like almost nine years now I've okay. been shooting, yeah. So like just quickly, I mean, how did it how did it start for you? Like, you know, um, you don't start this good, so you had to start somewhere. How did you start? Like, what got you into this? It was actually so I I forgot what year, but I tore my ACL playing soccer, and so I had like nothing else to do. And then Instagram came out around that same time, and I just started shooting with my phone on Instagram, but started buying lenses for it. And then I started getting interested, like, wow, these people are taking amazing photos around the world. Like, I want to shoot that. I bought myself a Nikon D7000, and I took that everywhere. Like, I think my first location was Abalone Cove, where I stopped. That's why it's my favorite place. Okay. And then I just started growing and had enough money. I bought a used D810. And, yeah, it just, it just grew up from just from Instagram. Instagram was, like, pure, purely inspiration for me to go out there. So rad. Shoot. Yeah. So rad. So many photographers fear or they, they poo poo on that, you know, but let's face it. I mean, it's a very democratic thing, right? I mean, you have all these people out there and to rise to the top, you have to, you know, go with the flow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's inspiration there, right? And obviously it inspired you to go and devote all this time to this. Yeah. I have a bunch of YouTube tutorials as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, and would you consider yourself more of a, um, cause I've only known you mostly as a drone thing, right? Did we ever do a yeah. straight photo class together at Cyprus? No, it was just, I only met you in that drone class. Yeah. I only took like a portraiture class once there. Okay. And that drone. Yeah. So, I mean, you really, um, so it's, it's really, uh, was surprising to me to see the, you know, the other types of photography that you do. It's really beautiful. Thanks. You know, and I, I would imagine people would want to, um, you know, put these on their walls and their ceilings and their, you know, you know, yeah. I actually don't have a photo in no. my room. I actually have a, a huge panoramic um, photo I took of Cancun that's in the living room. I don't know if I can show you really but quick. People, how, how would somebody get a hold of you if they wanted to buy one of these off you or have you print them a gigantic, you know? Uh, just personally message me. I really don't have a website. Like I've, I've been hesitant to make a website and put myself out there. Mostly really? I've just been doing paid gigs for like portrait, portrait shoots, like family portraits and graduation photos. That's about it. It's just word of mouth. 
Because I feel like your imagery has such beautiful energy, and like I think some people would be inspired to have something like this on their wall, you know, and so they can just go, they can follow you on your. Is it better for the Instagram or the Facebook, or it doesn't matter? Facebook, or Inst mostly I think Instagram because that's where a lot of my photos are that I post okay. up. Yeah, okay. they can hit you up there. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks. So what what have you been doing since I've seen you? Shoot, flying your drone. Uh, uh, buying drones or no drones at all or what I've had the same drone for since we've had that class bought in a couple of lenses for my camera to go shoot every now and then uh, but I've been doing a lot of uh, GoPro stuff and I think a lot of drone stuff after that class too but right now it's died down because of you know obvious reasons yeah yeah but yeah a lot of GoPro hey. stuff mostly so what does that mean so GoPro meaning like you're what kind of stuff you shoot with the GoPro? Um, when I go out to like the places I shoot to like Avalon Clove, I'll bring my GoPro and just start filming whoever I'm with. Mostly my girlfriend. Cool. So that's cool. Yeah, but you don't you don't you're doing a channel, so you're not doing a channel like on YouTube or something like that? No. no. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. I use a lot of copyrighted music, so oh. I won't even make it on YouTube. <laughs> It'll be demonetized. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. So what is the future of drone? You're one of the only people I know that still has a foot in there. I mean, what's, what's the latest? Um, I still follow a lot of um, drone pages on Facebook. Yeah. That keep me up to date with the laws and all that. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think there is a future for hobbyists. Like there's been times where I've been wanting to sell my drone cause I don't know if, I think it's going to lose value. There's so many laws coming into place cause nobody, I think there's a huge population of people that don't like drones because of the the sound and their privacy getting taken. There's and there are bad apples out there. Yep. But you know, not everyone. One bad apple can ruin it for everybody. And there's still yep. people flying near planes. I don't know if you saw that one photo of um those blue jets that flew by in Southern California. I remember that, but which which photo are you talking about? Which one? There's like one photo where like I don't know how close they were to the jets. Like one aerial shot. But I haven't heard it since. But there's still people ruining it out there. Still flying when police officers are, the firefighters and helicopters still out trying to do investigations or put out a fire. So, and there's, they're going to put a law where they're going to, um, anyone can check our identification with that drone. So they're going right. to listen to us and they uh, keep track of us. Right. So. Well, they're tracking us right now with the cell phones, aren't they? Aren't they like, getting cell phone information to see if people are actually sheltering in, you know? Yeah. 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 That. yeah. Um, but when you and I took that class, it was kind of evident that it was not going to be a hobbyist thing because it was just yeah. all going that way. Right. It was every day. It seemed like we learned about some regulation or I mean, cities, I mean, we're, you know, like if you're in California and you buy a drone, you can't fly it hardly anywhere. Yeah, you really have to just be careful or be out of sight. Mm -hmm. and that's why I love flying in Paul's Vera, this because there's not really too many people out there. Right. No, one gave, no one's giving me a hard time. No right. one um, told me, like, hey, you can't do that. That's why I love yeah. flying over there, too. Even though if I'm going to be shooting the same thing, I love it there regardless. That's your spot, huh? Yeah. And that's a tough thing to find in, Cal in Southern California, don't you think? Like an empty space? Around here, yeah. There's always going to be like some police officer or some lifeguard that, that has spoken to me and said, like, hey, you can't fly here, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I always take it down when they tell me to. Right, of course. Or, right. Just, or just find a low location or wait for them to leave. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, that's a shame because for the people that are respectful of all the rules, you know, it is a beautiful shot. I mean, there's nothing like that vantage point of a drone. Yeah, I'm so grateful to even have one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just the images that I've gotten, it's like once in a lifetime for some people. Absolutely. And I, I think at one time, I probably already told you this a long time ago, but I read somewhere that at one time, like, you know, like before I was born, they used to use like birds to put cameras in the air. Like they literally would tie cameras to birds. Like, I don't know if I've read that or not, but it, I, think, I think you're right. Yeah, they, they did it during wartime and balloons too. And they yeah. want to look at what the other guys are doing. So they get the thing up there and they just be lucky if they got a shot, you know, and, yeah. and then they'd have to get the, somehow retrieve the thing 
and they got to develop it in the in wherever they're at. They had to develop it in a you know in chemicals. Yeah, Can you imagine that? I mean, that's like, <laughs> and, and you have this thing that just goes up and it's got satellites and it stands deadly still and. Uh-huh. I mean, God, it's a, don't you think it's a miracle? I mean, well, I think like growing up in technology, I'm like, I'm, I've been used to it. Maybe with an older generation, like where you guys were able to handle film like every day or wh- however time you used to go, it used to be a longer process where now I'm like, I'm able to get the micro SD, put it in my computer and start editing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. You could edit on the drive home if you weren't driving, exactly, right? Yeah, like you have a laptop, just put it in and automatically upload to the internet. Yeah. I wonder if the new drones are going to have like Wi-Fi, so just go straight from the drone to your uh, to your phone. Yeah, you're able to do that. I think you yeah. just need to have a, like a more up-to-date um, phone that can handle that 4K. God, 4K, that. that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. These drones are getting ridiculous too with um, the specs that are coming out. Yeah. Have you seen the the DJI Map, Mavic Mini? No. What is? Tell me about it. Uh. It's, I think it shoots like at 2K now, and it's like as big as like a like a water bottle or smaller than this. Able to fly like three miles away, 30 minute flight times. Wow. Oh, it's insane. So that's the key, you know. Like you, if you are sort of a risky guy, you get out there and pull it out of your pocket, get it in the air, shoot your shot, get it yeah. down before anybody sees it or could. And that's the thing too. I know my next door neighbor had a. Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I what do I have? I have the Mavic, and I think mine's first generation, and his was like the little small one, smaller than the Mavic. What was that called? The little, it was like a um, um Mark. Yeah, and yeah. that thing was quiet, man. So I can't even imagine what the new the new drones must be really quiet. And smaller than that one. Wow. Yeah. That's nuts. Because it's able to fold just like the Mavic. Really. Yeah. You just put it right in your pocket and leave. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so when are you going to, you know, get out there and do this again? You talked to earlier about, you know, you, you have been shooting a lot because of the situation. Um, isn't this a great time to shoot because of it? Because there aren't, aren't people all out of the way? And I, When first quarantine started, yeah, I should have been shooting. <laughs> but now it's like, Everything's going back to normal. The freeways are packed. Beaches are packed. I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah, it just feels like everything went back to normal, even though nothing's changed. Maybe slightly. It's gotten a little bit better. Right. Right. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see in a couple of weeks if people are, are testing positive for COVID or not. Yeah, that's what I was saying, too. Like, that's really the question. No matter what anybody says... You really can't trust it, but you'll know if the morgues fill up and the hospitals fill up. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, thanks for doing this. Um, and thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. And um, God, your stuff just blew me away. I'm, I, I feel, I'm, I'm kind of sad I saw this now because now I'm going to want to go out there and freeze my ass off in some field and get pictures like these you know but i have this feeling it's going to take me like 10 years to get there you know i mean you you really uh you really been working on this thanks yeah yeah, it's yeah it takes some time or you just got to go out there and shoot and just experience it yourself i feel like it's a good time to do this because this is a way to take pictures you know and not be around a lot of people yeah you just got to find that right location right yeah right that's cool well, keep keep in touch. Let's try to talk to each other sooner than every three years, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> For sure. And I'll I'll see you I'll see you soon. Yeah. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.